Okay, so after lunch, gather on the patio for a walk over at about one. Okay, that's about all I have. I wanna now turn the floor over to Justin Lawrence from NSF, who's gonna tell us a bit more about the, um, the pre-events NSF program and about Earth Cube. He's bringing up my slides. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Justin Lawrence. I'm one of your program directors at the National Science Foundation. I manage the geomorphology and land use dynamics program, as well as a program called PREVENTS, which stands for Prediction of and Resilience Against Extreme Events. Thank you. Uh, PREVENTS co funded uh, the meeting this year along with EarthCube. It is an honor uh, for me to serve your community. Uh, this is the first um, PSDMS meeting that I've been to, and I'm excited um, to learn about uh, what you do. Given that the meeting this year received uh, funding from the Prevents and the Earth Cube uh, programs, I'll provide some information about those two programs that I hope will be useful to you. Before I launch into that information, I just wanted to first thank all of you who have served uh, the community as a reviewer or a panelist for the National Science Foundation. I recognize that this is very time consuming and hard work, but it really is what makes the funding system work. If you're interested in being a reviewer or a panelist for NSF, please let us know. So here's a quick overview of the PREVENTS program. The purpose is to advance our basic understanding of natural hazards and extreme events to benefit society. All proposals must address the two primary targets, enhancing understanding of the fundamental processes underlying natural hazards and extreme events and the variability inherent in those hazards and improve our capability to model and forecast, the latter part there being especially relevant to this PSDMS community. We encourage but don't require people to consider how their work can improve understanding of the effects of these hazards and events and enable development of tools to enhance societal resilience. So this is the current management team for the PREVENTS program. Please feel free to reach out to any of us uh, by email or phone and ask questions. Don't be afraid. We're just regular people and we are here to help you. Here's how the program is designed. Each year, we give about $8 million in co-funding to projects submitted in the core research programs that address natural hazards and extreme events. Unlike proposals submitted to the Track 2 competition, these proposals can support new data collection. We provide about half a million dollars each year for conferences. That's where the money from this PSDMS um, conference came from. We provided about $18.5 million for Track 2 projects. The Track 2 competition runs every other year. It's set up to handle the research proposals that meet the two prevents goals but don't fit into any of the core research programs. They're intended for synthesis and they do not allow for new data collection. You can see the, the deadlines there, the letter of intent is due the last Friday in January of this year with the full proposal coming in in late September. So here was the outcome of the track two proposals in the first cycle. We received 199 letters of intent. From that 131 projects were submitted. 17 of those were compliant with the solicitation. The others were returned without review. And of those 117 proposals that went through the review process, 13 awards were made. Success rate was around 10% was obviously very competitive. So these are the people leading the track two projects that rose to the top and received funding. You may recognize some of these people. Some of them are in the CSDS, CSDMS community. In addition to these people, the awards supported many undergraduate students, graduate students, and postdocs 
we recognize do much of the heavy lifting that makes our science possible. And we aim to ensure that they receive excellent mentoring in the projects that receive prevent support. Uh, Prevents dollars were invested in awards spanning a broad range of natural hazard types. You can see the distribution here for the overall portfolio. This should give you a sense of the broad range of expertise that we had to tap for our reviewers and panelists to be able to cover the various angles and the proposals that we received. It's very uh, challenging intellectually to bring these diverse fields together in the same merit review process. So I just wanted to provide a highlight here of one of the track two awards that was funded at the level of almost $1.7 million. The overarching objective of this project is to improve our ability to forecast flood and landslide risks by integrating recently developed geomorphic modeling components into a mountain to coastline modeling framework. This project is specifically targeting the challenges associated with the co-occurrence of landsliding with flood events. So the PIs of this project are members of the CSDMS community, and I would encourage you to talk more with them to learn more about this unique effort. I mentioned at the start that EarthCube uh, provided co-funding for this meeting. Eva Zanzerkia, one of the program directors for the EarthCube program, gave me some information to share with you. If you have any specific questions regarding this information, I would encourage you to get in touch with Eva. Uh, Raleigh Martin, who is also at this meeting uh, right, right there, um, could also probably help you. He's currently working with Eva. There's an opportunity to participate in Discovery Registry. They're taking a decentralized approach to linking data repositories. Communities are being asked to develop standards for sharing data, models, and tools. Keep an eye out for the EarthCube solicitation updates next fall and spring. The EarthCube All Hands meeting is in early June of this year in Washington, D.C. So Eva also thought you might be interested in these opportunities currently being offered through computer science and engineering. There's a solicitation on the streets for training-based workforce development for advanced cyber infrastructure. There's a solicitation for cyber infrastructure for sustained scientific innovation, data and software, elements and frameworks. And lastly, there's this call for the partnerships between science and engineering fields and the NSF Transdisciplinary Research and Principles Data Science Institute, the Tripod X. The deadline for this one uh, is next week. Keep in mind that GEO co-funds proposals that are submitted to these calls and thus your research might fit, uh, even though they're, they're funded through computer science. So keep your eyes open for update, uh, updated deadlines for these in 2019. Lastly, I wanted to draw your attention to the harnessing the data revolution, big idea. It's being set up to address five themes, science domains, foundational data science, systems algorithms, cyber infrastructure, and education workforce. The investment in 2019 in this area is expected to be large. Stay tuned for opportunities. So thank you for your attention, and I look forward to meeting you over the course of the week.